I welcome you all to today's session, the topic of which is overview of charge under the Companies Act 2013. Moving forward with this session, let me give a brief introduction of today's topic. Charge. Charge is a financial security created by the company on its assets or property in lieu of securing the loan taken by the company by any financial institutions or banks. This session will be taken by Ms. Khusbu Soni, who will enlighten us with this topic in a more detailed manner. Over to you, Khusbu. Thank you for the introduction, Surbi. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you to the session. Thank you so much for joining the session. And uh, I would love to enlighten you about the topic of today's webinar, that is uh, overview of charge under Section Companies Act 2013. So beginning with this uh, session, I would like to begin with a uh, PPT. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes. Yes, Kushbu, it is visible. Okay. Okay. So uh, beginning with the session, I would like to explain what is charge. So section two, clause 16 of the Companies Act 2013 defines charge. Charge means an interest or lien created on the property or asset of a company or any of its undertakings or both as security and includes a mortgage a charge is a security given for securing loans or debentures by way of a mortgage on the assets of the company. Normally, the debentures and other borrowings of the company are secured by a charge on the assets of the company. In simpler words, charge is a financial security created by the company on its assets or property in lieu of securing the loan taken by the companies from financial institution and bank. So explaining the creation of charge, giving any asset as a security is no, we would continue with the session uh, explaining the type of charge. So very few people know that there are five types of charge. What majorly people know is there are five types of charge and uh, there are mainly the charges are actually based on the nature and on the condition. First, we would like to explain like uh, on the basis of nature. So going by the basis, there are two types of charge. First is fixed charge and the other one is floating charge. Now, what is fixed charge? A charge which is specifically created on the property is known as fixed charge. Here, the company does not have the right to sell out the charge until and unless it is satisfied. Floating charge is the one which is not created on a specific property. It is uh, generally created. So as we know that uh, the stock is, uh, the stock undergo the issue again. So we were discussing about floating charge. Now floating charge is not on a specific property. It is generally on stock. Now what happens, a stock undergoes various procedure to become a final product and then it is ready to sell off. Now the question arises that how can a charge holder sell off a floating charge? Now what happens is a charge has to be crystallized. That is a floating charge has to be uh, created fixed first, then only it can be sold off. So we are going to discuss that what is crystallization. Now, crystallization is the process by which a floating charge converts into a fixed charge. When the charge holder takes steps to enforce his charge, a floating charge becomes a fixed charge on the assets covered by the charge. Until a floating charge becomes a fixed charge, a company is free to deal with the property charged in any manner it deems fit. But once the floating charge crystallizes, the company cannot dispose of the charged assets without paying off the charge holder. Otherwise, the charge holder can recover his dues from the proceeds. A floating charge crystallizes or becomes the fixed in following situation. First, 
where the company ceases to carry on the business, whether the principal amount has become payable or not, unless the debenture or trust deed contains the stipulation of the contrary upon the commencement of finding of, a, of the company. Now, what happens when the company is not in a position to repay the loan and a charge holder uh, feels that the company is not uh, in the position to uh, pay off its loan, it can crystallize uh, the floating charge. Now, what is crystallization? As I discussed, crystallization is the conversion of floating charge to fixed charge. Now, when a floating charge is converted into the fixed charge, it can then be sold off. Now, it has the right, I mean, the charge holder has the right to sell off the asset. Now, effects of crystallization of charge. What happens when a floating charge is crystallized into fixed charge? First, as we discussed earlier too, the floating charge gets, con gets converted in, into the fixed charge and the charge gets priority over the subsequent charge. Now, what happens in a floating charge when uh, the charge is created as well? The very first charge gets the priority. And the most important fact here is the charge first created gets the priority, not in terms of pro uh, proportion. Then the remaining portion, which is not paid, it gets passed on to the subsequent charge. Going ahead, I would like to explain the, the three questions which mainly arises when we talk about charge. Now, there are three important questions while we discuss charge. Where the charge can be created, on what, and the nature of property on which the charge can be created. So first, the charge can be created within or outside India. That is, a charge can be created within the territories of India or beyond the territories of India. So there is no limit to creation of charge. Now, the charge can be created on its property or assets or any of its undertaking. So obviously, the charge is created on a property or an asset. So it may be a property or asset or an undertaking on which the charge is actually created and uh, whether intangible or other otherwise and situated in India or outside India. So the charge may be tangible. It can, the, the asset on which the charge is created, it can be within the boundaries of India or outside the boundaries of India. Going ahead. So this is the most important part of this session. Uh, timelines for creation of charge. Now, what earlier used to happen, earlier as in before the amendment came, on or before 2nd November 2018, the charge had to be created within 30 days of creation of, within 30 days of creation of charge, the charge had to be registered. Failing which the charge could have been registered within 30, 300 days from creation of charge or it could have been registered within six months from uh, 2nd November 2018, whichever is earlier. But since the time has already been elapsed, so this portion is not relevant. What is relevant as of now is the charge created on or after 2nd November 2018 should be registered within 30 days from the creation of charge. Whenever we enter into a loan and a charge is created, it should be registered with the ROC within 30 days with normal fees, failing which the company can register the charge within the next 30 days, but with additional fees. Now, even if the company fails to register the charge within 30 plus 30, that is 60 days, it can register the charge within the next 60 days with ad valorem fees. Now, I think uh, very few of us knows that what is ad valorem fees. Now, ad valorem is the value. Now, when the additional fees is calculated within the 120 days, calculated as per 30 plus 30 plus one, uh, sorry, 60, that is 120. So that is ad valorem fees and it should be on the value. So not going deeper into the term, the main focus should be on the timeline for creation of charge. So as I explained, I repeat that the charge has to be registered within 30 days with normal fees, failing which the charge can be created within the next 30 days with additional fees or else failing which if we fail 
if a company failed to register the charge within 30 plus 30, that is 60, along with the additional fees, it does have the option to re register the charge within the next 60 days with ad valorem fees. Now, application of charge, uh, now what happens is when a company does not register a charge within 30 days, so the even the charge holder now gets the right to uh, register the charge. Now what happens is uh, what a charge holder has to do before making an application to the registrar of the companies, what it has to do, it has to intimate the company that it is going to register the charge. And the time limit for that is within 14 days. Within 14 days, a charge holder has to intimate to the company that it is going to register the charge. Now, charge holder may itself apply to the registrar to register the charge if a charge is not registered within the prescribed limit, that is 30 days. And also in the form, there is a prescribed form for creation of charge, that is CHG1. Now, a registrar may allow the register of charge once notice is given to the company within 14 days by charge holder. Now the registrar, uh, while registering the charge on the demand of a uh, charge holder, the registrar will satisfy itself that the uh, charge holder has uh, intimated the company within 14 days. Next, date of notice of charge. Now, any person acquiring such property, assets, undertakings, or any portion of their or any share or interest therein shall be deemed to have notice of the charge from the date of such registration, where any charge on any property or assets of the company or any of its undertaking is registered under Section 77. Now, the Section 77 is of the creation of charge. Now what happens is when a charge is created, it is a deemed notice to the public. Now a question may arise that how is it a deemed notice to the public? See, once the charge gets register, uh, registered, it is updated on the MCA portal. Whenever we log into MCA portal, there is a tab known as view public. We can go there, we can uh, pay uh, some fees to view the documents of the company. Over there, we can see CHG1, that is creation of charge. And on the later part, we are going to discuss what are the other charge form as well. So if a, if a charge holder wants to know the details of the charge created, like on what property, what is the asset on which the charge is created, the amount of charge which is created, the amount of loan which is created, and, the, and on the date which on which the charge was registered and created. So all these minute details we can get from the form. And also whenever we uh, see the master date of the company, what happens is there is a list of charge. From there also a charge holder or any person can go through about the company's charge. Next, uh, register of charges to be kept by registrar. Now there are numerous companies in India at which show creates charge. So definitely it has to register a charge because if registrar does not do, does it, so how are other people going to know that the charge is created or not? So the registrar shall in respect of every company keep a register containing particulars of the charges registered under this chapter in such form and in such manner as may be prescribed. A register kept in pursuance of this section shall be open to its inspection by any person on payment of such fees as may be prescribed for each inspection. Now what happens is it is the duty of the registrar to keep and maintain the register of charges. Now what happens is whenever a register of charges is maintained, so it has to be kept open for inspection. Now, as I discussed earlier, how can a person see? Suppose if I want to know that ABC Limited has created any charge or not. So how will I come to know about that? First, what we can do is I can uh, open the master data under the master data, uh, master data tab in MCA portal or else what can I do is I can go in the view public section, I can pay the fees and also view like each and every minute details of the charge created by any company. Now, 
company to report satisfaction of charge now this is a very crucial step when a charge is registered this becomes very important for a company to register the charge when it is satisfied so the company shall give intimation to the registrar of the payment or satisfaction in full of any charge within a period of 30 days from the date of such payment or satisfaction in form csg4 along with the fees the registrar may on an application by the company or the charge holder allow such intimation of payment or satisfaction to be made within a period of 300 days of such payment or satisfaction on payment of such additional fees as may be prescribed on receipt of such intimation the registrar shall issue a notice to the holder of the charge calling a show cause within such time not exceeding 14 days as to why payment or satisfaction in full should not be recorded as intimated to the registrar you know what happens when a company register its charge the char and when the charge gets satisfied yes, so in uh, cag4 the charge has to be uh, the satisfaction of charge has to be registered and intimated to the registrar within the 30 days of satisfaction of charge now it is the duty of the company to uh, register the satisfaction because if a company does not intimate it to the registrar then how will other people know that the charge is already satisfied if the charge if the satisfaction of charge is not intimated then it will be uh, updated on the mca portal that it already has a charge the asset already has a charge so to free the asset to uh, update that the asset is already free, uh, freed the company has to intimate it to the registrar and form cag4 along with the necessary fees in 30 days of such satisfaction that the charge is satisfied now what happens is whenever a company makes an intimation to the registrar about the satisfaction of charge what happens is the company sends a show cause notice to the charge holder as well because see it is it becomes necessary for the registrar to uh, confirm it from the charge holder as well that the charge is created so what happens is the the registrar sends a notice to charge holder as well that whether the charge is actually satisfied or not and to confirm it the uh, the charge holder can uh, uh, accept whether the charge is accepted or not and there will be consequences of that so uh, we will discuss in the later part now what happens is if cag4 that is satisfaction of charge it is signed by the charge holder as well what it can uh, what does it mean that if cag4 is satisfied by the charge holder as well it uh, it is not necessary for registrar to send the news now intimation of appointment kushbu hello yes kushbu i will just uh, request you to stop the slide show and i will make you the host because i don't know why people are just writing on these slides so i, I think they don't know uh, that is why they are writing on the slides so please can you please stop the slide yes 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 right all right sorry for the interruption again uh now we are going to discuss section 86 that is intimation of appointment of receiver or manager now what happens when a charge holder feels that the company is not in a position to pay off its uh, liabilities i mean the loan what it can do is it may apply to the court to enforce the asset now what is enforcing the asset it is the selling of the assets 
so any person may apply to the court for selling the assets on which the charge is created the court may on being satisfied pass an order for appointment of a receiver or manager for the asset on which charge is created on receipt of order from the court an intimation has to be made to roc and company within 30 days of receipt of order now what happens is as i said when a, whenever a charge is created and there might be possibilities that the company may not pay the loan or the amount uh, or the charge or asset does not get freed so what what can happen is the person the charge holder may apply to the court for selling of the assets so when the court gets satisfied that the reason is genuine the company is not in the position to pay the contract or i mean uh, the contract of loan so it may pass an order for appointment of a receiver or manager for the asset on which the charge is created so what court can do is court can pass the order for selling the assets and for that he may the court may appoint a receiver or manager for the asset on which the charge is created now what happens when the company orders uh, the court orders the company and roc has to get intimated about the fact that the charge holder wants to sell off its, its assets because the company is not in a position to pay what can happen is the charge holder in form cg6 can intimate to the roc and company within 30 days of the receipt of the order that a person uh, a receiver or manager is appointed for the asset on which the charge is created now what the person is going to do the person is going to assist the charge holder to sell off the assets okay now uh, it is the com- just like it was the duty of the register uh, registrar to register the charges to maintain the charges register a uh, company should maintain a register of charge as well and there is a prescribed form for the company to keep and maintain the register of charge and that is cg7 now the ch- register of sh- charge should be kept open for inspection now in inspection can be done by the members of the company or by any other person other than the members of the company so whenever a member wants to inspect a char- uh, the registration or the register of charge that is cg7 they have they can do it by uh, the, they does not have to pay any further fees but when any other person wants to uh, inspect the charge documents or the registration of charge they have to pay a fees so now going to the next thing consequences for non registration of charge now since the session has started we have already been discussing a lot about a registration of charge the timeline and other things as well but now what are the consequences of non registration of charge contract now what happens is the contract of charge becomes void it's very obvious that whenever we create a charge when we don't re- do not register it how how is the registrar or any other person going to know that this asset is not freed that a security is created against this asset so when we do not register it within uh, the stipulated time as we discussed 30 plus 30 plus 60 with ad valorem fees the contract of charge becomes void and also consequently when the charge the contract of charge becomes void the charge holder also gets unsecured he does not has any right to enforce the asset on which the charge was created because this is a legal procedure to register the charge when it is created and uh, but the very important thing here is may uh, many people may uh, have queries that uh, if a contract of charge becomes void whether the contract of loan is still valid or not so the answer is yes contract of loan is valid because see for an example if uh, a company named abc limited 
it has taken loan from hdfc of 10 crore and created a charge on of 5 crore on that asset of the company so maybe it hasn't uh, registered the charge which is created so he is not liable to pay uh, to pay of the charge but the contract of loan is still valid abc limited has to pay the amount of loan to hdfc because contract of charge and contract of loan is maybe interrelated but the contract of charge does not affect the contract of loan there is no relation and the company is liable to pay the loan which it, it has taken from any bank financial institution or any creditor now going further with the contravention and consequences of non registration of charge the punishment for contravention is on the company is rupees 5 lakh for officers found in default is 50000 and person who willfully violates uh, is liable under section 47 and now what happens is a person who willfully violates see for the company and for officer in default it is very simple that whenever a company violates or breaches the uh, charge section or the law relating to charge the company is going to pay a penalty of 5 lakh rupees officers who were found in default has to pay 50000 rupees but person who willfully violates now what does a, some people what do they do is they either suppress the material information or they provide false information so it's very obvious that we have already been uh, so much aware of section 447 that is section of fraud it's very obvious that a person who is willfully uh, suppressing the material information and uh, not providing the correct or uh, true information to the person who is asked he is liable under section 447 that is the section of fraud now ratification by central government uh, in registration of charge now what happens is uh this section is uh, amended firstly it also considered about the creation of charge but now just to remove the confusions now i'll be explaining it in a uh, depth so what happens is uh, whenever as we discussed uh, whenever a charge is created it should be registered within 30 days failing which the company can register the satisfaction of charge within 300 days these the 300 days is excluding the 30 days which was the initial time period so now so ultimately the charge has to be created in a total days of 300 days okay so what happens when a charge is not satisfied even in 300 days so a company can make an application to the central government in form inc 28 that is condonation of delay now what happens it can make an application to the central government to register the satisfaction because obviously as i discussed satisfaction of charge is as much as important as the charge has to be registered when it was created so what happens is a company applies to central government to register the charge now when the central central government is satisfied that the reason was genuine of uh, not uh, satisfying the charge with the registrar what it can do is it may order roc that is registrar of companies to register the satisfaction of charge now this is a uh, kind of remedy to the person who fails to re uh, register the satisfaction of time uh, charge within the stipulated time period so then what happens even when 300 days is no i do not mean that when a charge is not created within 300 days and it is simple to uh, apply make an application to central government no my suggestion will always be that a company should definitely comply with the law within the stipulated time period in order to uh, refrain from the penalties and other consequences of law as well so yes uh, i repeat for this satisfaction when a company does not satisfy the charge the registration of charge it can make an application to central government 
and then if he is satisfied it may order roc to register the charge now what what it was earlier earlier it was like when uh, the charge was created then people uh, and it was not satisfied within the stipulated prescribed time period uh, the companies used to make an application to central government for condonation of delay and then it created a lot of confusion that has to like obviously for creation of charge uh, it is not created within the stipulated time period and then they had to apply to central government and for the satisfaction of charge there were same procedure as well so just to remove the confusion this section was brought in the section 87 of the companies act which deals with a rectification by central government for a uh, registration of charge now thank you so for uh, with this i'm going to end the session i would love to uh, welcome your questions if anyone has any query you can definitely ask um, hello ma'am hi uh, yes ma'am it's paritosh here hi uh yes ma'am i have one of the query in case when the company does not register charge register the charge within the stipulated time so what are the alternatives we have in this case as in earlier there were 300 days 300 odd days now they have removed that and inserted in the cag4 and cag1 we have a limited time so in that case what is the other option because in multiple cases what happen is when one charge is not register bank is not providing loan for second charge or further charges so in this case what are the alternative we have uh sir thank you for the query uh the it is a very nice question but see uh, since i discussed in the later part of the session that they have removed the condonation of delay so yeah. it becomes very important for the company to register it within 30 plus 30 plus 60 days with ad valorem fees so as of now uh, if we go into the depth of the law and interpretation see there is nothing there are no alternatives which can be done see there was a reason behind removing this section of i mean uh, the condonation of delay for creation of uh, charge so if if there must have been any alternatives then the company would have been like uh, lenient uh, for the section so what happens is the company has to register it within 30 plus 30 plus 60 and there are no such alternatives also rather than being there being any uh, alteration there are consequences of non registration of charge as it was discussed in the session yeah the the issue is exactly that only sir as of now there are no alteration mentioned in the uh, law so yeah it has to register it within the stipulated time period any other query kushu we have a query in the chat box i would like to read it for you can i know the process of registration registering registration of charge in case of consortium banks whether we should give all the details of lead banks or both the banks okay so the procedure for registering the charge is as same as i have discussed it is same for all the companies there are no such uh, any other law or uh, specification for different kind of companies and uh, yes we do have to give all the details to the lead bank uh, and other banks which we have mentioned in the query it has it is very important to like you know uh, provide the details when a company enters into a loan and uh, create charge and all the procedure that we discussed so yes it is important to provide all the details i also agree with you kushbu that we have to provide the details of all the bankers uh, any other query uh yes mr nath has asked uh, one more question can we do charge registration without registered loan agreement sir i think the answer to this is no because obviously when is a charge created a charge is created when we enter into a loan agreement right 
when we uh, when a company takes a loan from any bank financial institution or any other thing but obviously for cre- when for the creation of uh, loan for when when we enter into the contract of loan the loan agreement is required so for better compliances and yes for creation of charge as well the loan agreement has to be entered when uh, we register the charge and uh, i would like to add i think uh, without registering uh, registering the loan agreement it will be not uh, you know what what to say it will be not valid how can you consider that agreement which is not registered as valid in the eye of law it might happen that in in the later stage in a later period of time we the company as well as the charge holder would face problem right mr rao has asked one more question um he is saying that but there is no option of giving the details of two banks in case of consortium banks in po- uh, in the form csg1 now see what what my suggestion is whenever we provide full details to the bank it it is on the like better part of the compliances the compliances are not only done in this letter but as well as in the spirit so whether may it may be that it is not mandatory but it will be better if we provide the details to to both the banks which you mentioned in the query uh, yeah it can be it can be provided in the form of attachment maybe uh, the particulars of lenders we can give in the attachment uh there is one more question whether professional certification required before registration yes definitely a professional certification is required before registration because registering a charge is a huge thing and it's important so definitely without any professional qualification or certification how can we uh, register a charge so yes it is required uh mm-hmm. ma'am uh addition to this in the recent cases what we have experience is that the small companies the certification is not mandatory for them see sir uh when the law came it did not actually uh, focused on the professional qualification or the categories of the companies on which a uh, professional uh, certification is required but to be on the better uh, to be on the safe side i think it is better to have a professional qualification and uh, for creation of charge yes sir any other queries okay we have another query as well if we unable to fill all the data related to security details as the data is large can we mention as per sanction letter in the box provided yes definitely you can do that actually your questions are so amazing and the session is becoming so interesting i really like the way you question any other queries okay uh, please clarify what happens if the company is not able to file charge even within 60 days sir first of all the as i discussed and i repeated a lot of times the charge has to be created within 30 then the next 30 with with additional fees then the next 60 that is total of 120 days with ad valorem fees now what happens is the company has to register the charge and if we do not register the charge within the prescribed like uh, prescribed time limit what happens is the company has to face the face the consequences as it was discussed in the later part of the slides see whenever the company does not register the charge within the stipulated time period the charge is going to the contract of charge is definitely going to get invalid and the charge is going to uh, the charge holder is going to get unsecured but yes the contract of loan is still valid but the contract of charge 
becomes invalid. So there are consequences as I discussed in the first query. There are no alternatives in the law as of now, but there are consequences which the company has to face. Any other query? The company can go for condonation in case of the satisfaction of charge, but not the creation of charge because see, it this uh, this was before this provision was definitely before the amendment came but now it is amend, amended and the company can only go for condonation in case of satisfaction of charge and not the creation of charge so the company cannot go for condonation in case of creation of charge but yes it can definitely go after the 300 days as i discussed for registering the satisfaction of charge Any other queries? I think, okay. I think we are done with the session. I would like Surbi to continue. Yes, yeah, I think we are done uh, with the session. Surbi, please give. Hello, <clears throat> I would like to express my heartful gratitude to all of you for your presence and making this session a great session. Also, I would like to thank Ms. Khuzbu for giving us this amazing session and enlightening us about the topic. This was a really cult a knowledge cultivating session. Looking forward for such session from you in your future, Khuzbu. Yes, yes, so we definitely we are going to join soon. And also, I would like to thank uh, all the partners and Mamta Benani ma'am for giving me the wonderful opportunity to come forward and speak and enlighten you about the topic and to be a part of the session. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you, Gushu. Thank you 